You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. After Buzz TV. From Los Angeles, California, and Maria Menounos, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Spotlight On is a long-form interview series featuring actors and TV personalities. And now, from the world's number one TV after-show platform, this is AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On. Hey everyone, welcome to AfterBuzz TV Spotlight On series. I'm Francesca Dugan, and with me today, I have one of the most badass chicks on television right now. She is a full-time Twitter I'm sorry, full-time assassin on her Twitter, and you know her as Charlie Matheson on NBC's Revolution. This is Tracy Spiridakis. Hello. Hello, welcome. Thank you. So excited for you to be here. Yeah, thank you. Excited to be here. Yes. Did I say your last name again correctly? Yes. Okay, perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You did great. Thanks. <laughs> and you, you speak fluent Greek, correct? I do. I mean, it's a little broken, a little broken rusty. Greek, yes, but uh, but I can, I can make my way through it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So I have something to say to you then. Okay. Okay. I practice. <laughs> Isay poli omorphi. Aww, that's so sweet. I teach people to swear, Aww. which is really fun for me, um, and not so fun for anybody else. That's, uh, that's uh, thank you. Ah, as she she taught me how to say, you're the response to that, but I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. Um, anyways, that was very um, testing for me. But so you, you did well. Thank you so much. Yes. You actually lived in Greece for a while, correct? So you're from Canada, and then when did you move out there? Yeah, I was born in Winnipeg. We moved to Greece when I was four. I moved back when I was nine. Um, we just lived in this little village, just kind of on the mainland, south of Sparti. Oh my god, that sounds awesome. Pretty much, yeah, pretty much awesome. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Did you do any acting out there? Mm -mm. I only started, um, I started doing theater and everything in high school, and then when I left, I moved to Vancouver where I met the lovely Kathy um, <laughs> and, uh, and started pursuing it as an actual career around then. Nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Did, so do you think you living in Greece, did that have any kind of like effect to your acting or how do you think that helped you along the way? Um, I don't know that it, that it uh, affected, I think it just kind of formed my, my personality in, in, in so many ways. The, the, <laughs> The Greek way of living is very chilled out, <laughs> nice. very, very relaxed, uh, which I love. And both of my parents are Greek. Um, so as much as I can, I tend to get a little high strung uh, <laughs> at times that that when I think like that and I think back to, you know, how my dad would tell me to react, I just chill out and, and, and get back <laughs> to the roots, you know, relax a little. Very nice. Very nice. You, was your first gig uh, super nat super super natural? Yeah, correct. It was one of my it was one of my first gigs. My very first gig was on this Lifetime movie called The Secret Lives of Second Wives. Oh, okay. I, I do remember seeing that. <laughs> I mean, that was my very first one. But Supernatural was was a you know my, the one following that or or right after. So it was one of the first ones very for nice. sure. And you were like a regular on the show, correct? I I was only in one episode. Oh, you were only in one. Yeah, I was only in one episode. Um, and I was really shy about it because they had um, on the breakdown they had written hot nurse and uh. I when my friends would ask me what the character was I'd be like it's a uh, nurse I'm playing a nurse and I just refused to, to give the whole <laughs> name because I, I would just be like oh. yeah yeah I was a little shy about it that's so awesome what was it like your first audition and actually booking the part you said for the movie for the secret life um it was it was terrifying my first audition um but th i remember that director he was really cool um george was his name i forget his last name right now but but uh he was awesome he was he was so sweet and, and made me feel very comfortable and confident so he was it was actually overall a, a great experience but you know your nerves just get the best of oh, you yes. for sure <laughs> and I was really, yeah very nice very nice um, you, so you did a, you did a little parts in like being human that TV movie Goblin I saw oh great yeah lots of, I, I noticed it's kind of like a sci-fi kind of like action trend you seem to go in I guess so um, yeah I guess I kind of I kind of have gone that way haven't I um, and and not by any kind of ha hand choosing by any means I think it's just kind of maybe echoes out of me I I love that genre as well yeah. so sci-fi and 
I love all the action bits. Um, one of my favorite parts about the show is is all the stunts and everything, all the all that good stuff. Right. So I was yeah, I was gonna ask. So you you came your first pilot season out here in LA, and you got Revolution. Yeah, and that's just crazy. Hey? That's awesome. I know. I know. I'm I'm so. I mean, yeah, so fortunate uh, to have had it all, all work out that way. It's kind of mind blowing that it that it went down that road. But uh, but yeah, I guess it was just you know it was a good good fit, good timing, stuff. Do you work a lot? A lot? Do you work a lot alongside J.J. Abrams? Um, he's he's in Europe right now doing oh, wow. yeah doing the uh, the uh, Star Wars stuff. But but you know I I he's he's not necessarily on set. He but he, we've yeah we've talked. I've I've hung out with him and stuff like that. He's a cool guy. Really, really sweet. It's pretty awesome because he does all the like sci-fi stuff too. He's so. pretty much the best. <laughs> I'm not going to lie to him right now. But he's awesome. I love him. I love all his work. And I remember when I first, uh, before I even started acting, I remember what, I used to watch Alias. I loved Alias. Oh, I uh, remember that, yes. Right? It was good. She's so badass. And whenever I would see the bad robot symbol come up on the TV, I'd always just be like, wouldn't that be awesome? To, <laughs> you know, and then, and then this happened. So it's pretty cool. It's, yeah, it's pretty cool. I love the show. You, I would never ever wanted to get in a fight with you, especially if knives were involved, <laughs> right? Or crossbows, anything like that, right? Thank you. <laughs> <It's> so awesome. <laughs> so, do you? You said you do your own stunts. I or do you try to. I do as much as they let me. I do have. Uh, I've had a couple stunt doubles throughout the last couple of years who are amazing, uh, so so talented, and I'm so grateful to have them. But I try to do whatever I can. I like it. I, I really do. And usually it, it comes when they always look better than I do. Doing <laughs> because I'm like, Meh. Um, but, uh, and not only that, but they, um, there's also certain times where they don't want you to get hurt, obviously. And I'm kind of a walking accident. So uh, <laughs> it always works out better when they're, when they're there. But I do try to do as much as Jeff Wolf will let me do. Awesome. What's the craziest stunt you've done so far? <sighs> I don't know what would be the craziest. The craziest one that they did was jumping off the cliff into the freezing water last season. It seemed like it was pretty intense. They wouldn't let us do that. Um, oh my! How freezing is freezing? They came up and told. We were, I mean, we're all we're all friends, and so we hung out after. And they were like, oh, "You sh you should be so grateful that oh. it was us and not you, because it was t terribly cold." Um, I don't know about the craziest one, but I've ha I have a lot of fun doing all the the sword stuff. That's usually my most exciting fun and then the the scene uh the stunt where i had to be with the uh th when i was the hooker <laughs> for that episode oh, yes. and the, the guy comes <laughs> in. um and he's you know trying to that whole fight sequence was pretty intense honestly uh and it was a lot of fun and i did i did that whole sequence and then we had my my lovely gal come do it as well um but i i got to do the whole thing myself um, also, and it was it was pretty. That that stunt guy was awesome. Like he was kind of le really letting me struggle and fight for it. So it was good. It was good fun. If it was you good could say yes. that in that situation. Good fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah, good fun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever gotten hurt doing any stunts? I've gotten hurt walking, not during stunts. Though. <laughs> I, we were doing a one scene where I was running, and there was they have these like patches of fake grass that are around everywhere, and the patch was directly in front of me, and there was all the smoke season one and I'm running and all of a sudden you see me and then you don't and I just like I'm a complete <laughs> camera and everyone was like ah! <laughs> I run so I mean I, I survived it but the, I usually had season one I had a lot of bumps and bruises that's so awesome I, I loved watching you like grow the first season the first time that you actually killed someone that was so pretty awesome it was like oh my god Charlie <laughs> yeah you know I I'm I'm so grateful to have had the opportunity to play somebody like that to to get to um, I really feel like in season one we got to watch this this world that we were introducing kind of un unravel through mm -hmm. Charlie's eyes, you know, and and it was her first time seeing it all and experiencing it all as well, and and um, just how t intimidating and how uh, wide eyed she was to the whole thing, and and I um, I loved having the opportunity to do that, and then really getting to toughen her up, and then coming to to the season where she's just kind of a bit of a badass which she's super you're super badass <laughs> we always talk about it it's just it, how crazy it was from like i said the first time then you killed and now you're just like choo, 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 and you're looking at you know uh david or um you know giancarlo and you're just like yeah i did that no big deal uh, no big deal no big deal <laughs> i think we were doing we were doing one stunt and i had uh jeff wolf was watching and i had to like jump up on this wagon. It was the wagon with the episode with the oranges and I had to jump uh. up on the wagon and I grab a guy and I stab him and then I, you know, do all this 
all this fun stuff. And I, after we had shot, I guess I jumped up on there and I, I just thought the whole thing was this fun little sequence. So I like jumped up on there, grabbed him, stabbed him. And I was smiling because I was having fun. It's all fake, right? So I was smiling and then Jeff came out and he was like, if you could just enjoy it less. <laughs> your character probably wouldn't smile in this. That'd be great. So I could do it again. I was like, ooh. Oh, that's pretty funny. <laughs> you're, you're, are, are the, so are, we, are the knives fake at all or yeah i mean yeah when you're when you're going to stab somebody or, yeah <laughs> okay. all, no 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 reels um when we have them in our sheets they're you know they they can for the, the weight and everything those are um, usually dulled down or whatever but when you're doing an actual stunt it's either um a plastic you know rubber knife or sometimes they have ones that don't actually have a tip on them so you just kind of make uh. you do that and then they draw it in after the whole oh. bit so it's just like a Little Fancy stump. schmancy. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I know. I I wouldn't think that they would have you, you know, swinging around real swords. But you don't want actors with real yeah. life things like that. You just don't want to do it. No, that, it's just. I always think about. Um, was it the crow? Oh Where god. Yeah. So Ugh. I. That's why I always get nervous. Like, are you guys really? Shooting, like, what about the crossbows and all that? Are it's all it's all so all safe and okay. secure. Yeah, I think you know, for for all parties involved, uh, for the actors, for production, for yes. everybody, we all. I mean, um, yeah, it's rubber arrows, and then the you know, there's like a bungee cord that's not even attached to having it. Oh. Like, it's all, and then you know, nobody can be in the vicinity for doing you know all that stuff. So it's it's definitely very well taken care of for the safety of everyone. Perfect. Mm -hmm. So you guys at home. It's fake. Don't try it. No, don't try it. <laughs> no. So, do you? I mean, I feel like the funniest thing is you guys are out there. You're kicking butt, but your hair always just looks so amazing. Yours yeah. and uh, Rachel, your mom in the show, uh -huh. Rachel. Her hair. You guys' hair just always so perfectly curled. Curled, and we're always like, man, I hope when the electricity goes <laughs> right. out, we have the same rollers or right? like hair ties. Sure, you guys use. <laughs> so good. Your makeup team's awesome. They're great. Yeah, we have we have a really great great, great crew all around. Everyone is just amazing. Awesome. Mm -hmm. well, how do you how do you like how's it being Charlie? Like, what do you like about her that you wish you could be more of, or what do you like living out through her? Um, my favorite trait about her is her um, her ability to, especially at this stage. She's she's confident to make the decisions that she knows she has to make, whether no matter how hard they are, and mm -hmm. she has the the confidence to to not second guess herself, right. to know that she's making a decision that she has to and stands by. She doesn't need validation from anybody, mm -mm. and uh, that's one of my favorite character traits about her because it, having the having the ability to really embody who it is that you are and to stand up for whatever it is that you believe in. Um, and have, you know, not be swayed in either way and just be exactly you is a very admirable quality, in my opinion, you know. And, and obviously in the show, it's very different circumstances, the decisions that she has to make. But I think, you know, what it boils down to is that she's very much her own person and she's grown into this really strong woman and she, she, um, she completely embraces that. And I, and I love that about her. Yeah, she's awesome. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> love you on the show. Thank um, you. A lot. So we we I don't know if you saw on Twitter. We asked people to let us know what to what you want. They wanted to hear about you. Everyone is all about the char char what Charlo Charlo. I, know, I get a lot of tweets about that too. <laughs> At first, well, the first time I saw it, I was like, did they spell Charlie wrong? I'm <laughs> confused. Well, there was there was Charlie, <laughs> and now there's Charlo. Which, which, by the way, Dave was like, why, why does it have to be Charlo? Why can't it be Marley? I was like, because that's it's not the same. It's way better this way. <laughs> I, lo I just love how people always just put together the names for couples. Yeah. It's just so funny. Yeah, no, it took me a minute. I was like, what are they talking about? So I just want to shout out some Twitter people really fast. We had X Small Town Girl, uh, Lost in My Stick, FLS, I don't know how to pronounce it, Carrie Eccles. They were all wanted to know, uh, they wanted to know if you knew how how much the fan base loves kind of you and Monroe, like your guys' character. Yes, I, 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 I you know, I've, I've, uh, you know, I've seen that come about uh, through, through the Twitter. I'm very bad at Twitter, by the way. I'm just gonna take this <laughs> moment to apologize. I read and I love all of you so much and I thank you. I just like, I just like, I get really scared of it <laughs> for whatever reason. I'm like, ah! <laughs> um, and, but I do love, you know, you all. Um, the whole Charlo thing, yeah, I mean, I think season season two, it just kind of 
uh, I, I when it started coming about, I think was at the beginning when he saved Charlie, and uh, there's just this like I think mm -hmm. there's something so wrong about it that makes it right. Do you know <laughs> what I mean? I think that's what where everybody's kind of coming from. There's like this intensity between the two characters, uh, and whether it's a I don't know whether it's a sexual thing or if it's if it's uh, just because they're both so intense and they're fighting for the you know the things that they believe in whatever that thing is I think there's just such an intensity that um, it kind of comes out however it comes out and, and uh, yeah I guess people dig it they dig it they're <laughs> rooting for it <laughs> Charlo 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 hashtag Charlo there it is that's awesome uh, yeah and the first season too when he saved you I was like hmm right see yes I feel like that was for his, that was, right, to, to get Rachel on his side and everything like that. But I felt in season, season two, I mean, I thought that that was just a, a very interesting, um, you know, mixture of, of people based on everything, you know, how her feelings are about the whole thing. And then having somebody be responsible for all the horrible things that have happened in your life right. and then somehow come around and be this like save your life and somehow you're you're confused about it right. and, and you know have they changed and can can you find somehow in your moral compass to to find a different side in that person and so it was an interesting dynamic between them i have to admit i kind of want charlo too <laughs> <laughs> there it is. There it is. I honestly, I have to admit it, I do. Um, you know, when they threw Connor in the mix, mm -hmm. I was like, well, this is kind of awkward because that's Monroe's son, so. <laughs> and I love it that people were still like, I understand that it'd be weird, but I still want it to happen. I'm like, that's <laughs> hilarious. Like, everyone's just like, there's so many things wrong about it. And they're like, I want it. <laughs> they want it. How, so how do you... I mean, you you and Connor on the show kind of have a little quips back and forth with each other, and mm -hmm. like, um, I mean, you guys had a special time, and then <laughs> not no more special time. So it's kind of <laughs> how do you call it special time? I you guys had a say special time together. <laughs> I'll say badass and kick ass all day, but not that. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. Yeah, and then and then Jason. Mm -hmm. See, I'm in love with J.D. Pardo. He's, he's such gorgeous. a sweetheart. <laughs> he's so amazing. Yeah, he's a total, total dear. I love him to pieces. Um, yeah, I think the whole thing with the Connor dynamic is pretty funny um, because Charlie really doesn't care about that relationship. Mm -hmm. She's very much, she could, I mean, if he was to call it off, she'd be like, oh, whatever. <laughs> you know, which is, which is kind of funny to see that that dynamic between them and he because she's so whatever about it right. i think that that kind of you know is is appealing to him in so many ways he's never had a girl just be that way with him i very much talk with my hands fyi <laughs> so i'm very greek um but yeah and so i think that that was the interesting uh dynamic between the two of them and then uh, you know when jason gets comes back into the picture he's that he's that guy for for charlie where i think um a big part of the reason that she holds him at a distance is because He's her first love. He's the person that, you know, we all have that person in life, whether it's a friend or, or a, you know, an ex, whatever, where you, you're around them and you know that you're going to make a bad decision with them. And you're like, <laughs> I don't want to, but I will. And, and, and I think that he's that person for Charlie. Like, she kind of always just trusts him and goes with it, you know. And, and uh, so that's part of the reason why she's so hold back from him. So how did you feel the last episode when, you know, Jason was going to kill you? or you kill him, like how was that for Charlie? Yeah, just heartbreaking. Um, yeah, it was an intense scene. It was uh, for for uh, Charlie, I think it was just one of those, you know, you're, you're, she's a survivalist and she's a, you know, she's she's been taught to, to, to be a warrior by, by Miles and by the environment that she's now in. So her instincts are to save herself. And I think as soon as it happened, there was that moment where all of a sudden, you know, there were things that were going on through my head while it was happening was why why is my life more precious than yours like why right. you know why why did I how can I make that call and I think there's also the the fact that she's also she she's kind of become so badass this year that she she just kind of takes people out with you know with, <laughs> with you know she thinks about it and her moral grounds are there, but she but you know she, it kind of happened this is the one that it happens and it completely jars her and there's a moment where you you know she also realizes that it, the other people that she's also killed and whatever had a family had a yeah. lover had a you know whatever and so there's you know it all kind of sits and, and weighs on her in a huge way i'm sure you can't say this or you, you might not even know do you think jason could come back <laughs> 
I love that you just I said it like that. Please. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Shout out to Krifke. You yell at him right now. You just say it. Um, I don't know. I literally know nothing about the, the future of anything. Uh, I mean, we've shot, obviously, the, the last four episodes, so I, I know right. based on that. But... But um, <laughs> but as far as everything going forward, I, I, I couldn't even tease yeah. if I wanted to. Totally understandable. <laughs> so if the electricity really went out, mm -hmm. do you think you could be as badass as Charlie? What would you do? Um, I don't know if I could be as, as quite badass as she is. Um, but I think I would hold my own. Like, I kind of consider myself somebody who would adapts pretty well to situations. <laughs> um, so I, I, I don't think that. I definitely wouldn't crumble and, and die. I, I, would, I would figure it out. I think one of the first things that I would do is probably try and hike my way up to Canada to find my family, depending on where I was. Um, but that would be, I think that would be kind of my first instinct. And it's something that I, I have thought about. You know, you can't not think about it right. based on the show. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, it's one of those things that you just, I, I think that would be my first instinct would be to find my, my parents, you know, my brother's. Let's see. I have a question. Okay. <laughs> oh, okay, perfect. So Eric Kripke is the creator of both Supernatural and Revolution. So did he remember you um, in Revolution? I mean, in um, Supernatural for Revolution, do you think? He, no, he, um, he saw on my resume when I went in for the audition. He saw on my resume that I had uh, Supernatural down. He was like, wait a minute, what? <laughs> because it was, a, I mean, it was a, it was a small part, the you hot know. nurse. Yeah. <laughs> um, or nurse, you know, yeah, whatever. Or... Um, as I like to say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he looked at my resume and saw that. And he's like, wait a minute, what? And then he went back and watched it. And the next time I saw him, he's like, I saw your episode. That's so awesome. Yeah, yeah but it wasn't, it wasn't until I was actually in there that he saw it, so. That's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. That kind of comes around. Yeah, totally. The business is small but large at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, pretty totally. cool. Um, so you were in GQ magazine. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure the exact date, but uh, it's totally awesome. I was watching a little the little video of you that they had on GQ, and they said they asked you what things you couldn't live without if there was no electricity, and you said PlayStation as one of them. I thought that was awesome. <laughs> I think that, well, here's the thing. I love playing. I wouldn't, honestly, I wouldn't consider myself, like, I don't, I don't really keep up with anything. I don't really know all the, the lingo and everything. I just like playing. I, I really have a good time playing uh, whatever, you know, game I'm, I'm into at that time. But I do love it. Like, whenever I'm in it, I'm in it. Like, if I have a game, I will think about it. And I will leave work. And I will go home and play for hours and be tired the next day. Do you ever play, like, with people online at all? I don't because no. I don't think that I'm good enough to play online. <laughs> <laughs> just, like, I've played Call of Duty online before. And I just get crushed instantly. But I think my favorite online, I, uh, I was with a, a group of my guy friends. And we were playing Madden online, which mm. is the football game. And uh, they were playing, but I was on the microphone, oh. <laughs> and it was awesome. Because I would the whole time I I can be a little bit of a um, da taunting jerk. I don't know. I don't really know what the right <laughs> word is. But um, so I was, you know, on there. I was just calling. It was all guys, and I was calling them out. You're losing to a girl. Nah, you and weren't even playing. I wasn't even playing, and they they quit halfway through the game. That is hilarious. It was fantastic. I hope they're not listening. I hope they are listening, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I hope they are. Okay. <laughs> that is so funny. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. I What well, you're saying, like, you think about the games all the time. I play Candy Crush before I go to bed. Do you? You're and addicted I, to that, hey? When I close my eyes, I just see the little candies. That's amazing. So I totally understand how you, like, live the live the you think about it just, yeah. yeah yeah when I was playing I was playing God of War and I got so into it that I literally I was I was I had a bank job I was I used to work at a bank so I'd leave my bank job and come home and my boyfriend at the time I would be there for hours and he'd come home from his work and be like are you seriously still sitting here playing I'd been there for like five hours still <laughs> playing like, yes hopefully I'll beat it soon <laughs> right hopefully I'll beat it that's the thing how games you're like just one more just one more try one more try one more try yeah exactly so besides PlayStation uh what else would you absolutely hate to lose when the electricity goes out? Um, I feel like my answer for this is so lame, but um, my cell phone would be one just because I, you know, I keep in touch with my family all in, in uh, Canada all the time and all my friends. So that would be a tough one to give up based yeah. on that. Um, I, I love my music. It would be tough as well. And then Billy and I started to come up with funny answers for this, but I really would miss a cold beer. You know, when you miss like a, on a hot day, yeah. you a know cold beer. Well, the episode where um, 
Aaron, he with the nanites are in his head, and he goes back. He the Bud Light commercial, and yeah. it's just like, oh my god, that's so true. I didn't even think about that. I think we wouldn't be able to refrigerate any food. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. I think it would genuinely. I'm not nice so cold. Could you imagine? Especially because it's so hot too, and we're all sweating, and you would just love to just sit down and kick back and have a brew. Oh my god, that's so funny. I didn't, I really did not think about it. And food's like my favorite thing on the planet Earth. Yeah. So yeah, okay. Refrigerator. I'd miss the refrigerator. Right. <laughs> it's huge, and we don't even think about it. Nope. I know. We always think. You know, you think you don't even think about. You know, we think TV and things like that. But yeah, your fridge, cold water. You're right. You wouldn't miss your curling iron though, because you always have great curls when the power's out. I'm not. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, in my in my regular life, I I, I don't really. I kind of I'm kind of lazy, so I do. This is I got dressed up for you guys today. So sweet. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. I straightened it. Very nice. Yeah. You know, I do what I can. Do what I can. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. And so, do you? I know the show's out. Is it? Is it in Texas right now, or uh, North? It was North Carolina. We were in North Carolina first season, and then uh, second season we've been filming in Austin. But we're we're okay. done now. Yeah. yeah. Right. So you're back in Canada. I'm floating. You're floating. Yeah, I'm here for a little while, and then going to Canada to visit my family, and then I think I'm going to do some traveling. Nice. Mm -hmm. Where are you going to go? Uh, I'm going to float around Europe for a bit. I think. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And uh, I saw from uh, Twitter originally yesterday, Giancarlo got a star. Yay! So you guys were out there with him for yes. the star. Yeah, so Pretty exciting. Awesome. Yeah, he's just so amazing and incredibly talented, obviously, and uh, a really, really humble, uh, beautiful human being. So it, I, so well-deserved and I was so happy to be here and be able to, to be there with him. It was just perfect timing, or did other some of the other cast members were they able to come out for that? Um, it was Eric and I. Everybody's kind of like you know some working on other projects or you know out and about. But um, oh, that was very American about. <laughs> um, uh, I've been working on it. Uh, yeah, no, I, everybody was kind of uh, kind of here, there, and everywhere. So I was I was here, and I was very happy to 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 be here, to be there for him. Awesome. Well, mm -hmm. we're happy that you came here. Super excited to have you in the studio. Um, everyone listening, she will be with us on a recap for Revolution a little bit later, so make sure you turn into that for any more questions or comments. And tweet us if you have anything within the next hour. We can get it out for her. Um, so I know you're not that great on Twitter, you said, but tell us your Twitter handles, and I know you have an IG, IG Instagram. What are your handles? Yes, uh, the Twitter is TR, and then my last name, Spiridakis. And then my Instagram is just spiritacus. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, everyone, thanks for listening. I'm Francesca. You can find me on XO, or Instagram, Twitter, and occasionally Vine, XOXO, C-E-S-C-A. Thank you again so much for being here, Tracy. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Do I say buzz you later? <laughs> the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.